really get to say that you wanted to say? How restricted did you feel? Even if you put three, four, I, five hours into the letter, you feel mad. I, it doesn't really express what I could have said if I was talking to them. That's what a book is. Does that make sense, everybody? Now, the second problem, the second most worst thing that students have as a problem is that their entertainment budget is bigger than their education budget. We struggling as teachers. Wallahi, we struggling. By the grace of Allah, we eat and pay our bills. Does that make sense? But your Netflix, your internet, your coffee and snacks budget is greater than your education budget. Someone might buy coffee, $50 soda or juice or snacks, pogey bait, $50, $60 a month. Right? No one is killing them too. They do it as they stop them long. But when it's time for the for the for the brother, hey, but to pay the class or help do the Well, you know, you know, I got a dollar. That's it's the truth, isn't it? You do the math. Oh, everybody at home, do the math. What is your entertainment budget and how much do you put for Islamic education? Okay? And then you and then that'll answer the question right there. So these are the issues. Number one, the program. You have to, becoming a student, you have to submit to the teacher's program and trust that the end is going to get where. That's why you have a conversation up front. Where are we going? Where are we going? You know? Now, how you get there, that's up to the teacher. The moment you stop trusting the teacher, you should leave the class because you're wasting your time. You no longer trust him. So how can you take what they're saying and follow their way? So we have to be smart, have set specific goals, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And for me, what I have done to help this out is I've given you a text, specific, a specific text that's relevant to what you need in fit. Does that make sense? We have a time frame before Ramadan to get through this text, right? And that is attainable. And it's measurable because I ask you to recite it every day, right? And so I can give you feedback and say, where you at right now, you're not going to make it. You need to be in this text. 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 You need to be spending hours with the text, memorizing it on a daily basis. Maybe you skip a day because it's Juma. But otherwise that... You know, I, I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to do this. I'm just trying to share technique. I read four hours a day, almost every day. Now, I break that up into one hour of tepsir, okay? One hour of that is just working on tepsir. One hour of that is just whatever I want to study or read. Entertainment reading. That's two hours, right? I do another hour of just Islamic studies, okay? And then I do another hour of like Kung Fu reading. I like martial arts. So we, we say in the house, we, 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 we offer Salat and we practice Salat, okay? Salat is the Muslim martial arts, okay? So we, and we read up and, and study that every day almost. It makes the four hours go really fast. Does that make sense? Remember we said before, I want you to read at least a book a week? No. Maybe that wasn't attainable to some people. So we need a book every two weeks. As long as, meet one every three weeks. Be consistent is the point. Because you will see gain. You'll be see measurable and relevant gain by doing that. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, let's go forward. Start from the beginning. If you don't know it, look at the page and memorize. And I'd say even with memorizing, you have to imagine yourself in them. It's written in the first person so that you can see yourself as part of it. Okay? Let's go. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I gave my word with heart and head to praise the love to life I've dead. Since the blessings on the property and respect the smile of his she had. 
As Muslims, we must study and pray to fight Shaitan in every way. Expect mistakes along the way. Repent to fight another day. So the first thing that I have to do now that I'm Muslim, accountable in every way my actions call on me is look to see what they demand. Have I complied? What the... Why it's... Was, the meaning of Shahada is the... Look at the page. The first thing we must know. There is no God. For real that is. Except the, He created it. And for them... He manages the fans of theirs from say high above the sky. High above the sky. Too high, I say not for partners and Nadir. And what is a Nadir? Competitor. For partners are Nadir. And this is what Shahada means, but there are conditions tied to it, to which we must adhere. Like knowledge and yaqeen and then acceptance, my sweet dear. Then in the then the sit, ikhlasu and mahabba. Allah, we ask for help and true and Okay, what is in fiyah? Think of the air as the steering wheel. Right, you're allowing yourself to be the steering wheel. That you turn. When Allah says turn, what would you like? Who likes a car when you turn the wheel, it don't go? It refuses. You know, you say you can go put some steering fluid in it, right? Or junk it. Or junk it, right? Because that's going to cause a problem. <clears throat> and we're supposed to be that steering wheel and turn when Allah tells us to turn. You don't want the car asking you, yo, what, what, you know, please stay in the right lane. You know, you're like, no, no, I'm going to go left. No. <laughs> you don't want that. And some of these new cars, they, they do that, right? <laughs> One car, I rented a car, it, it started to make a turn, and it started to do a little free and refuse because I didn't put the left blinker on. Right. I said, man, turn this thing off. <laughs> you know? Because it's, it's refusing. It's, it's, it gave me a little bit of, of a hard time because I had to, you know, whatever I had told it to drive itself halfway. It's you know? Good. It's commanding you to... Nah. So, an empty ad is to allow yourself to be driven, to turn where Allah tells you to turn. Okay? Just want to say that if you don't know that, then write it there. In your books, there's a notes page on every page, right? For you to write these notes. Why? So that when you're reviewing the text, you constantly see the notes. Okay? You constantly see the notes. As you constantly see the notes, you'll constantly be reminded of what is there. Okay? Then every Muslim must concur. Muhammad is the sent by Allah. Therefore, we trust. We must obey his orders and respect the things he called Quran. He brought the laws full and complete. Not one detail did he. All sacred laws must come from him. And it's what's salam. Now we, we should know this because we believe in this, right? And that's the benefit of this. We're not memorizing something that's irrelevant. This is what we say we believe. And these are the demands of our belief. So that would then encourage us and be a motivating fashion, fa factor for us to memorize it in order to embody it. Okay? For it to be part and parcel of our being. Okay? Allah, we ask for help, sir. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then I must, then I have to learn the things I need to do my fardu aims. Let me read it to you. And then you follow me. And then I have to learn the things I need to do my fardu aims, like regulations of salah and just how much to pay zakat, the parts of hajj I have to do with Ramadan, and I have to. This obligates all Muslimin to learn the laws and what they mean. Now let's go back, okay? So after we establish our aqidah, you see that? After we get this mentality down of how we're supposed to know la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and we start with that because that's the first pillar of Islam. And then I have to learn the things I need to do my, and it's a play. And then I have to learn the things that I need to know how to do in order to do my fardu ains. And also it's in there saying, I need to do my fardu ains, which is exactly what fardu ain is. There's fardu kifaya and there's fardu ain. And the fardu ain is on every ain. It's on every specific person. 
Okay? Fardu kifaya is something that everyone can do for everyone. One of the tricks of shaitan is that he tricks the people into focusing on doing something that's fardu kifaya so he, while he leaves off doing something that's fardu ayn. Does that make sense? No. So know the tricks of shaitan so that you can be careful of them. He's going to encourage people to do good so they can leave off what they're supposed to be doing, which is greater and better for them to be doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Keep telling that person, giving that person dawah while the adhan for, for Maghrib comes in and you didn't pray Asa. But you're giving dawah. But Asa's in. And Shaitan and Kirsh, no, you gotta do, don't let them walk away just yet. Tell them this point, give them this delete. So we need to be careful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I have to learn the things I need to do my fardu ayn. So meaning that it becomes wajib, obligatory upon us to learn everything we need to know in order to do the fardu ayn. What are the fardu ayn? Like regulations of salah. And just how much to pay? Zakat. Zakat. The parts of hajj I have to do, because there's three different types of hajj, right? It's Ramadan and I have the flu. This understanding is just of the Fardu Ains, the five pillars of Islam. Mm -hmm. This understanding, this obligates all Muslimin to learn the laws and what they mean. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's explaining everything there for you. That knowing that you have to do Fardu Ain obligates you to learn the laws and what they mean, meaning how to apply them in my life. Do I have to learn how to apply them in your life? Yeah, no. no. Again, stay in your lane. I know it's a new statement, but it's a good one. It is. You know, sometimes they say that you want to smack them. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> that's you see all the old times like, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but it's a, it is a good statement that, that, that we need to all remember what we have to do. Allah tells us that. He says, Yeah, you are Ladina Amanu, Aleikum, and Fusakum. Focus on yourselves. No one's gonna, no one else's, you know, going astray is gonna harm you if you do what you're supposed to do. That's what, listen to that. No one else's wrong is gonna harm you any way, shape, form, or fashion as long as you do what you're supposed to do. Okay? This is what Allah says. That's what stay in your name. Do what you're supposed to do. Shift the case? Hey. So. And then I have to learn the things I need to do my fardu ains like regulations of salah and just how much to pay zakat. The parts of hajj I have to do, it's Ramadan and I have the flu. Now we're not going to do zakat and we're not going to do hajj. Because this is a beginner text, a primer text. It's for beginners in Islam, right? Children for the most part. And for us adults who didn't go through this when we were children. So that we can have like a, in our minds a, a child, we went through this, right? And we can put it in its place and then go forward to the next step. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And in the children's text, you don't need to put zakat because is it obligatory for a child to pay zakat? No. no. And is it, is it obligatory for them to go to hajj? No. no. So then this is why we set it up like that. And most of the times in the beginning, it's too complicated for a beginner to learn those two things. So we start off with the main things that they will be doing immediately. Okay, which is Salah and Ramadan. Does that make sense? Of course, not leaving off Iman. Come closer, sit closer to me. If you're going to sit. And then I have to learn the things I need to do. My fardu ayn like regulations of Salah and just how much to pay. Okay. The parts of Hajj I have to do. It's Ramadan and I've done. This obligates all Muslimin. That means everyone is involved in this, right? This is an obligation on every single one of us. To learn the laws and what they mean. Seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim, male and female. To the extent that they need to know what they have to do in their life. Okay? This obligates all Muslims to learn the laws and what they mean. I've sworn to do Allah's command and not to do. Come on, say it like you mean it. Now, this is a new chapter here. This is, this is a new chapter. In this chapter here, we're going back to the introduction. Remember what we said in the introduction? We said, uh, we said that I gave my, I almost fell out. When, when you know, this one brother popped in, I was like, oh, honey, man, mashallah. That's why you heard me skip. Like, oh. That's 
So, <laughs> she said the same thing. I gave my word with heart and head to. Okay, so now we're coming back to this part right here. When he said, I sworn, I sworn to do. And that's part and parcel of I gave my word. What was your word? No, no, no. What was your word? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah and everything that goes with that, right? And we went through that, and it says that you know, the, the, from the shahada is al iqiyad, right? Allowing ourselves to be directed, right? And from the shahada, second shahada is we must obey his orders and respect the things he called haram. He brought the laws full and complete, not one detail. All sacred laws must come from him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a fi'l al amr this is an order. Okay, telling you and send, and send the peace to him, okay? So here is our oath that we are going to obey his orders, right? So I've sworn to do Allah's command and not to do one thing haram. Have we kept that word? Not one day in our life. Why did we say one thing haram? What did Adam get kicked out of Jannah for doing? How many things did he get wrong before he got kicked out of Jannah? One thing. We don't think about that sometimes. He did one, and that is an example for us. It's the very first story in the Quran. Then take it as an example. Allah is not unjust. Did he treat Adam wrong? Okay then. And the example of that for us in our life is Allah told Adam he could do whatever he want, only one tree. We all say, man, if that was me, I wouldn't have fell victim to that, right? I'd have told Shaitan, man, keep his step and kick rocks, right? We, we talk all this trash. But if we look at the Sharia, how many laws do we have? We have that wajib, right? What's next? Mustahab. What else? Makruh. What else? Mubah. And what else? Haram. Haram. How many things here are lawful? How many things are unlawful? One. Ain't it the same thing? And having a whole bunch of trees and only one tree haram? No. Are the things that are haram more than the things that are lawful? No. You guys get the point? So we can reflect on that. And this is a beautiful dua that we can make. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haram. Oh Allah, make, make, it, make the halal thing sufficient for me. Make me satiated and satisfied with the halal over the haram. Right? Make me not even look at the haram because I don't even need it. I don't even want it. And make me and, and enrich in me. Enrich in Arabic means make me free of needing or wanting. Because what do we say about the rich? You don't want for nothing. Right? So make me not want for nothing siwa besides you. Okay? Siwa, siwa, siwa. You know, it's, it's not. Yani, it's, this, this is a poem, Mordetani. Yani, it's showing that you can say siwa, siwa, siwa. It's either way, either way. Anything besides Allah. Now this is a dua that Allah's Messenger وسلم, taught us in order for us to fight, to, to ask Allah to fight the, 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 the haram of the stomach. The haram things of the stomach. What are the, the sins of the stomach? Desires. Right? They want in something bil bathy. And Allah said they don't yeah, yeah, kulun. They don't eat in their heart in their stomachs, people to him illa nara. So that, that what you, you desire, somebody else's stuff, taking it through bathroom, through deception, this is the same, this is one of the sins of the stomach. Because where's just the punishment given? To the stomach. So it's as if they've eaten and put in their stomach fire. Does that make sense? So what do you do? Allah's Master said, if you want, call on Allah and say, Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramik. Oh Allah, make me satisfied with your halal. Over your haram. Right? Make the halal beautiful to me and the haram disgusting to me. And make me not even want for anything besides you. And that includes his sharia, his deen. Right? His way. So we make this dua, and we keep making this dua, and we make this dua until we mean it. Does that make sense? Sorry? It should be the most widely known dua, bro. Alhamdulillah. You know, everything comes when it's necessary. 
you know, inshallah ta'ala. We, we just got to keep looking and hoping and asking, you know, inshallah ta'ala. So, I gave my word, sorry. I've sworn to do Allah's Say it like you mean it. I swore to do Allah's And not to do Say it again. No, I've sworn to do Allah's command. Why do we say Allah's command and emphasize Allah? Because most people, Allah says, have you not seen the one who takhada hawahu? Ilahahu hawah? Have you not seen the one who's taken for his own God, taken as a God for himself? What? So I told you, in my understanding, the one, for the one we make sure with the most is ourselves. Okay? So we've sworn to do Allah's, not my command. Allah's command. What is Islam? Submission. Okay, well, give me some, Give me another word. Surrender. To surrender. You are surrendering. You are giving up. What are you surrendering and giving up? Your not your desire. Yeah, You're not going to lose the desire. So, and as soon as fit, we say, if you don't have the desire, then you don't get the reward for not doing it. Because you don't have the desire for doing it. Some say that. It's an argument on the usul Okay? But you won't lose the desire, inshallah, because it's a jihad. You're fine in the spiritual plane. But you lose your, you drop your will to do it. You stop yourself, the intention, taking over attempts to do that thing. Does that make sense? And this is one of the tricks of Shaytan, is he shows you sins. So that you might get liking those sins and say, man, I, I had the opportunity, I would do that. So you get the sin. Right? Because the only thing that stopped you was the opportunity. Does that make sense? And this is one of the the, thing, the haram things, the harms of watching haram programs. Or making your, our children like haram people. So they said, I want to be just like him. And this is in the story of Qarun. Oh, I was pissed that I was like Qarun so I could do what Qarun did. No, you don't want to be like Qarun. Okay? So... We remind ourselves, I sworn to do Allah's command and not to do. And we emphasize this so that we can remind ourselves that I've broken my word. Okay? And I continuously break my word. So what do I do? I sworn to do Allah's command and not to do. So when I so when I fail, I must repent. But if we start at the beginning of the introduction, we needled in there. We say we sewed it in there into the usul of the slave that he has to repent, right? Expect mistakes along the way. Say it like you mean it. Expect mistakes along the way. They go hand in hand, people. Expect mistakes along the way. All right. Expect mistakes along the way. Okay. Expect mistakes along the way, repent to fight another day. Expect mistakes along the way, repent to fight another day. Right. So I've sworn to do so now in there, that's the introduction. Now here we're gonna to go to you know Atfal Bayam. We're gonna, you know, Nwasilam. We're gonna now talk about it a little bit different. Okay? I've sworn to do Allah's command. So when I fail, not if I fail, so when I fail. I must, I must repent before I get a from up above Allah most high before my soul is caused to die. Now what are we learning here? The door of repentance is open until the day we die. Does that make sense? No. Number two, that it is wajib upon us, obligatory upon us. We must repent before I get a punishment. From where? From Allah. From Allah. Yeah. Right? So he is the one you manage his affairs of theirs from high above the sky. Okay? So we say, and if, so when I fail, I must repent before I get a from up above Allah most high before my soul is. Now we know the soul is different from the body, but we're using it for poetic reasons. Somebody said, well, yani a ruh, yani hadha. No, we're talking about ourselves, okay? For any person is caused to die. Now we go to tafsir. Repentance will not 
Until I'm sad for what I've done, not to do that sin again. And it's still sinning? All sinful deeds? And no, it's not halal to say. No, I'll say it like it. I will repent. Maybe. For those who think like that will find the devil has. He plans to drop his soul in hell, turn to a law to. Say, I stuck for the law while I too boule a hundred times every day. I stuck for the law while I too boule. That's all the Muslim has to say. Go ahead, Shane. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu I'm asking inquisitively, okay? Because if you believe that, what's the proof? Okay? What, what you know, why it's correct and what's a flaw? Okay? We, what did we say here? I, I just wanted to do Allah's command and not to do one hopping haram. We know that with the shahad. So when I fail, I must repent. What's the proof that you have to repent? Watubu ilallah tawbatan nasuha. Allah tells us in the Quran. Well, I told you. Heather, see ya, T. Would your conscience also, your self accusing spirit, bother you? Let's first deal with the, 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 the practical right in front of us. The thing that we have to do first and foremost is respond applicably to the law. Allah tells us in the Quran, Okay, Allah tells us to repent, to turn to Allah in a tawbah, nasuha. Now, a lot of people misinterpret the word nasuha, right, nasuha. Because of this hadith, people quote, it says, adinu nasiha. Everybody heard that hadith before? What do they say it means? They say it means the, 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 the deen is all about um, sincerity. Sincerity. No, no. No, they no, don't they say, say, no, they say advice. They say advice. Okay, they say the deen is good advice. And this is incorrect. The word nasaha uh, does not mean good advice. It is the purest type of honey. Okay? It is a honey that is pure, nothing but pure honey. What they call virgin honey. Does that make sense? So it represents something that is super pure. Hence the meaning, they say, and, and some of the scholars say, there is no word like it in the Arabic language. Okay? So we put for this meaning, sincerity. Now, the proof that it doesn't mean good advice is, what's the rest of the hadith? The hadith says, Liman ya Rasulullah. Who, to whom do we show this nasuha? He said, Lillah. Are you going to give Allah good advice? 
It, it don't make sense then, does it, right? Then he said, لِرَسُولِهِ Okay, you want to give the Messenger of Allah good advice? Okay, وَلِكُتُوبِ وَلِكِتَابِهِ And then for his book, how are you going to give the book good advice? Okay, and then he says to the general imams and the general people amongst the Muslims, now with them you can give them some good advice, right? So if you take the meaning of pure sincerity, then you can be sure and pure, sincere for Allah, to Allah, and sincere to his messenger, and show your sincerity, and through your sincerity to Allah is through Tawheed, right? And through your sincerity to the messenger is following him. In kuntum tuhibun Allah, then you follow the messenger of Allah, right? Right? So then, and your sincerity for the book is to memorize it, okay? And to constantly turn to it for guidance. To use it when you're making, when you're sick. One of the ulama has said that making hijrah from the Quran is not using it to, for shifa, no. to cure yourself. No. You take two aspirin, you believe in two aspirin over two, two pages of Quran, then it's a problem. Oh, come on, Abu No, you come on. No, there's a, there's a loss of, of understanding here, and I'm not twisted. Allah says it's a shifa. It is a cure. Sadaqallah. Forget what the FDA said. Because they're liars. You know, they won't even... Let me... You know what? Just as a point, everybody eats eggs, right? No. Do you know eggs have no nutritional value? That they... You never... You can live your whole entire life and never eat an egg and you will have not missed anything. It is, do you know this illegal... To say that it's nutritious, that's why they never say that. What do they say? It's edible. The incredible edible. It's edible. They're playing legal games with you. They're playing legal games. And you gonna believe them? Edible meaning you ain't gonna die straight out if you eat it. You may get high cholesterol, and later on we'll say something else killed you, but there's no reason for you to eat it is basically what I'm saying. And the harm probably outweighs the good. Does that make sense? But we don't, again, we, we you know, she's, she's, she's gonna. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin. But we don't tie that to being part of our deen. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us it's part of the deen, right? To eat from the halal and tayyiba wa la tattabi'u. Khutuwaat the shaitan, right? So eating what is halal and wholesome is part of following deen and not just following the footsteps of shaitan. Because why? Because shaitan was the first thing he did after lying to us. Well, the second thing he did. What did he lie to us about? Food. And then he got us to eat food that altered our mentalities, right? And so these shaitan from the people do the same thing. Does that make sense? So it's from our deen to know what's good to eat and what's not good to eat. That's fit. Okay? That's basic every day. So that means we have to do research, right? And find out what is real. And Allah tells us if the jaqum the fasik on the never in for the bay, you know, if some open center comes to you with any news, then find out. Who told you it was good for you? Was it a facet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you need to we need to do our own research then, right? You guys follow my point? Okay. I swore to do Allah's command and not to do. So when, I'm, when I fail, I must repent. And so we have the proof. So we have to repent to Allah in a tawbah that is sincere. Okay? That is pure and sincere. Taba is to turn. Okay? Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask for his maghfira. What's the difference between tawbah and maghfira? al ghafara and, and this is where Arabic language has to come into place. And midfar is a helmet. This is a midfar. If it was metal, it would protect me. You get my point? So when we were left with her, we don't want to suffer the consequence of our sin. Does that make sense? That's what we want. When we want tauba, natubu, we want to, it's a, it's a mad, now imagine this. Just use your mind. I got a vivid imagination. Let's say, for example, this is where the believers are. The believers, 
are in a metaphysical plane. This is where the believers are. And then when you, a person, disobeys a law, he removes himself from that place and he goes down here. From Esfela Saphine, and he goes down here. Everybody see me? No. So Talba is asking permission to get back where I belong. Where I'm supposed to be. Does that make sense? So he turns. He turns from where that disobedient dimension and comes back to where he knows he's supposed to be. But he ain't allowed sometimes. There's a privilege. Allah guides who he wants to the path that is straight and is straight in the mouth. Does that make sense? So hopefully he realizes the preciousness of his iman. And then he asks Allah to allow him to return. And that's why Allah is a tawab. He's the one that allows and gets and lets him go back there. And that's the tawab from, the tawab from Allah and the tawab from us. Does everybody understand that? And we ask for maghfirah. Don't let the, the sin affect me and the consequence of the sin. And rahmah, don't embarrass me with it and make me fall back into it. So these are different angles, right? And this is important that we understand this. How can we be sincere? How can we be sincere? How can we do anything but lift service if we don't really understand that and embody that understanding? Does that make sense? Watubu ilallah. Turn back to Allah. Tawbatan nasuha. Sincerely, Allah, please take me back. Please allow me to get back on the stage where I belong. I recognize that I have gone crazy and gone out of the place where I'm supposed to be. Please allow me back. Tawbatan nasuha. Does everybody follow me? And then the dua, or also, Allahumma kfini bi halalaka an haram. Oh Allah, make, the, 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 make me satiated with those things you made halal. Over those things you made haram. Wa agnini bi fadlika. And, and make me not want for anything. Bi fadlika, meaning this is an extra gift from you. I'm your gracious, I don't deserve it. This is, you don't have to do it. But this is from your, your greatness. That you will give this befuddlika amen siwak or amen siwak behasab al qira'ah. You get my point? Whoever, anyone beside you or anything beside you, and both are correct because anyone beside you includes me and my desires. And everything beside you is everything, including the human thing. Does that make sense? So this is what tawbah is, and we have to understand the difference between that and, and al-ghafoor and that and al-rahmah. So I swore to do Allah's command and not to do? One thing haram. So when I fail, I must repent before I get from up above Allah most high. Before my soul is caused to die. And we know from the hadith that, that we don't tawbah, the door for tawbah is closed. Okay? In the, be, that's that's, that's the, the great tawbah. But for us, our Yom al Qiyamah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when by the time this young man becomes old, everybody else's Yom al Qiyamah would have started, meaning they're minor day of judgment. When they die, then that's it. The door, the door is closed. Does everybody understand that? Before my soul is called to die. Now we go on to the section of the conditions of tawbah. Now everybody says they know them. But having a visa to memorize them and keep them in mind, okay, is vital. Repentance will not until I'm sad and feel regret. So this cat here, he has to feel sad and feel regret. For what? For what I've done. And I intend not to do that sin again. Now this is because the ulama say it is not obligatory for you. Dig it. It is not obligatory for you to make tawbah for everything you did. So if you say, well, Allah, I'm not going to do this sin no more. Okay? Well, then you return, you repented from that and not all of them. But you should repent from all of them, right? Yeah. Somebody said, well, why wouldn't you? I've met people who say, yeah, I know it's a sin, but I ain't ready to repent yet. I ain't, I ain't no stuff for life, no. Stuff for life for yourselves. 
You know, but I hear it from, no, I'm serious. We can only seek a sit far from Allah from our, for our own selves. But you know you see people say that. I know I'm wrong. Some people say, damn it, or the hell with it, or uh, other words. Like, forget that. That's strong language, ain't it? Yeah. And they held responsible, and may Allah not hold us responsible and allow us to make repentance. So we have to repent from that sin. And we can make general dua for all our sins. And this is why I advise you guys to sit down one time. In the nighttime, someplace alone, lock the doors and write out what you think of your sins and ask it specifically. Look at them so that you can really get to You could really look over yourselves and say, man, I did that. Because sometimes we forget. The ego makes us forget what we did. And if you forgot, just ask your spouse. <laughs> they got a whole bunch of things they can remind you of. You know, you might want to tape them and then play it later, little by little, so you get. Because sometimes it's hard to hear. Oh, stop! <sighs> oh, you get my point, guys? In order to repent and take it seriously, because you don't want to die with that stuff. Repentance will not be correct until I'm sad and feel regret for what I've done and I intend. And if still sinning, I must stop. All, All sinful deeds, deeds right on the spot. as soon as you realize it. You can be wrong, but don't be wrong and strong. Okay? Sometimes you lose your mind for a second and you start going over. Someone says, stop for the law. No! <laughs> That's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> Who you saying I'll do that to? Hey. <laughs> okay. So... If we get reminded, we have to check ourselves. We have to check ourselves, and we have to train ourselves to check ourselves. But the ego, the ego, the ego, like, like the Imam was saying the other day, intisar nafs. Every sometimes the argument gets out of hand, and all you want to do is win. Now, the point is lost. Now I have to win. Now, that means what? Napoleon, you have to lose. That's the Napoleon. And it's not alone that I must win, but all my adversaries must lose. That's Shaytan. You get my point? So we have to check ourselves. Check ourselves. Check ourselves. And if still sitting, I must. Come on. And if still sitting, you don't sound. I must stop. Come on, guys. And if still sitting, I must stop. All sinful deeds. Right on the spot. And no, it's not halal to say. No, 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 no. Say it like this. And no, it's not halal to say. Say it like people say. I will repent. Maybe one day. I remember being in the Marine Corps. And I was, you know, young 20-something-year-old guy. No, I wasn't even 20 yet. I was like 19. And so they were talking about religion. And we were like, religion ain't really important. You know, as a 19-year-old, I was thinking, it's not really important. I said, maybe when I get old, because what I would happen, one guy was getting married. And he was concerned that what religion his wife was. I wasn't married. The guy in the next room for me, he wasn't married. I was like, what difference does that make? You know? I said, maybe when I get older, that I get old and slow down and retire, that's going to be something. And this is the mentality. I will repent Maybe. Maybe. one day for those who think like that will find a devil has you get the point what does he plan though he plans to drop their soul turn to Allah say a stung fiddle law while two who lay a hundred times in every day that means find a hundred reasons throughout the day not sit there and just do it but catch yourself a hundred times have that much consciousness to catch yourself. A stunt for the law while two boy lay is all the Muslim has to say. Now, what did Bani Israel have to do? They had to kill themselves. If you want his tawbah, kill yourself. Now, all we have to do is say that. Pray to the Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.